And Teresa, we meet uh, today here in Brussels in one of the, of the studio of Rosas, May 2020. You were supposed actually to, uh, to premiere, to open a new piece in something like 10 days in, in Vienna. Um, I would like actually to start this conversation by talking about how much actually the, the current situation is, is informing the work you are working on at the, at the moment. Well, the situation is um, special in that sense that I plan to make a solo. Mm -hmm. That after nearly 40 years ago, I made Violin Face, Faza. I made once to the music of John Bass in 2000, one or two. So every 20 years I make a solo. Keeping Still with Anne Veronica Janssens mm -hmm. was in 10 years ago, but that was a solo, mm -hmm. solo with two, yeah. So it was, uh, to a certain extent, it was a gift from heaven because in these days of confinement, of social distancing, of you can't share the space with somebody else, um, it was actually the ideal situation to make it. Um, I started making the solo while I was uh, in New York in January, working on West Side Story. So that was also somehow similar to what happened when I started to make Violin Phase while I was living in New York for one year. So the contrast could be not more um, extreme of being after 40 years back in New York, working on West Side Story and then sharing that with researching, which I consider making a story for question mark, how many next years. You know, I'm turning 60 in June. I gave um, Faza and Violin Foes, Faza over to Yuvika and uh, Soa. I decided this is the, this is the last thing I'm gonna do for myself. Uh, without wanting to be, no, not pathetic, but I really love to dance. I find both in my choreographic practice as the director of parts, as I find the experience of looking for choreographic writing, experiencing that from inside my body, developing own vocabulary and developing a language which is like, as I always define it, embodied abstraction. So it was to bring that physical practice, to bring all the thoughts and theories that I, I, theories is a big word, but the ideas that were merging over those 40 years, to bring them together in, in is the best to do it in a solo. And it means to lock yourself up, you know, in the, in the complexity I have of, of guiding this company and having the responsibility for so many people, it's a hard job mm -hmm. to close the door and say, not now. So you have to sort of lock yourself up to do that. So in that sense, it was... Coincidence between... It was coincidence, it was ideal. I started the first rehearsals after New York, I started them to do in... Um, in a little school in Kasbeck. And Diane Madden, who is accompanying me, was following the rehearsals with Zoom. Mm -hmm. So the space was very small. And then after a while, Rosa's closed completely down. I was all alone here in, the, in this space. And after a while, Diane could join me. I think it was the ultimate it's the ultimate exercise in embodied abstraction and how physically you feel how the world is like and what's happening in the world is like unnatural luxury 
solitude, yeah, where you're longing for the others and you're facing yourself. I think the working through the screen mm -hmm. was the most difficult because it gives focus and distance in the same time. You know, choreographing is organizing the space between people. And, and that was suddenly, we got in a, in a kind of, everything was screened off. I think we all went through different stages from mm -hmm. unbelief, then from uh, disbelief, yeah, uh, to sadness, to being courageous, to trying to understand, to revolting, to say, well, this doesn't make sense, it's ridiculous, questioning so many of our essential things as human beings, as being part of a society, Western society. But I do think that um, the arts are affected by it, but performing arts especially, mm -hmm. and I think from the performing arts dance more than ever because it's all about the body. Our instrument is the body, is what is inside, outside. It's our direct relationship with the earth and suddenly we realize that, that we're part of a physical community and that, that we are not in the Anthropocene but in the Eremocene. Yeah. Suddenly there's this loneliness that we that we experience. I think we all share it to a certain extent. Oh, well, we're discovering things which are essential. It brings us in a very direct way to, to questions. Where do we come from? Where are we? And where are we gonna go to? My main concern is also about younger generations. You know, I have children but I also have people in the company who have, what do you do with small kids? Mm. What is, what are we, what is the perspective, you know? I think these concerns have been a part of my life already in the last 20 years. You know, the first performance I made, which was directly handling, in an explicit way handling with that was Keeping Still which I made with Anne Veronica Janssens, mm -hmm. which was made 2007. Seven, yeah, it's mm -hmm. 13 years ago. And that in a very explicit way spoke about that. Mm. I, I just think everything came quicker, mm. came quicker than I expected. But this virus, I remember the first, uh conversation on the phone we had uh, at the beginning of the crisis you told me about the for you the violence of it because it's really attacking the body and as you said the body is really for you the the main the main tool but it's also for me uh, when I think about your practice and I think about this virus it's of course a, a threat for the body but it has also huge influences on on time as you said and on space and these also elements are absolutely fundamental also in your practice. I'm also thinking a lot about the whole the uncertainty actually that we are experiencing since now two months, because I think we are all used also in our practice or professions to, to schedule a lot of, of stuff yes, and yes. works a lot on deadlines. How, how to deal also with this uncertainty? Well, the, the thing is that in the last years, my ecological um, concerns, my worry about what's happening with the Earth, with planet Earth, what's happening with humanity in relationship to that Earth, has, has been extremely concrete. Um, and so the, the, the regular practice in which that we are in, namely 
yeah, you, you very much realize that you're part of a capitalistic system of producing and traveling, uh, taking airplanes. We're anchored in a globalized cap capitalistic system of consumption and we are not different from that. And I've been asking myself and asking the company also a lot of questions about it, of how to change it. Mm -hmm. With Rosas, we're in a very particular situation is that we're one of, I think, of the fewer companies anyway in Belgium who still have a structure where we, ha we have a fixed group of dancers. We have a large community with a lot of freelancers, but we had still have this very much this community of dance artists and who, who work on new creations, on repertory and all that. And our main income is not from subsidies, but is from performing mm -hmm. and selling 75%. 75% of our income mm. is from performing. So we normally had a, a rate of 270 performance, 250 performance a year, yeah. which is enormous. And we perform in big halls and in small halls, basically mainly in Europe, but all over the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we're at financially and as a business model, we are in a dramatic situation because we had to cancel 100 performances. Uh, and we were losing enormous financial loss which is endangering the continuity of the company mm -hmm. and which is mainly also making impossible to invest in new generations. Yeah, or where you put for the dilemma, do you stop with people you've worked with many years, older generations, and what do you, where do you give priority? Where I think in a harmonious model you combine both. Mm -hmm. You combine the experience, the craftsmanship uh, of older people with the energy of uh, younger people, just like I did in Brandenburger. You know, Brandenburger mm -hmm. was large scale uh, and it was like bringing older dancers together with mm -hmm. younger dancers. So this whole thing about uh, having to make this like choices about one or the other. I think also no longer societal thing is, I think, um, is dramatic and not right, I think. I think that's what you should try to combine, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. It is the body that uh, is this house in which we get up every morning and with which we tell the most essential things to each other. Yeah, we speak, we choose words, but I mean, now we see in an artificial way, everything what takes in from outside and goes out, we're closing it up with plastic. Our practice is so much about organizing the time and space, organizing our time with the space between each other. Mm -hmm. um, the body in all its different aspects mechanical way, in a sensuous way, in a social way, in an emotional way, in an intellectual way, in a spiritual way. And now there is basically the gaze that stays, which is a very interesting thing, I think, is that you touch each other with the gaze, uh, which is a, like in late medieval, early Renaissance, you know, sculpture and, and um, painting. paintings painting where you don't touch, but it's the gaze that touches. So this reflection is something really more coming from this kind of distancing that is imposed at the moment for you to, to work much more like, for instance, through, through gaze or it's... Not really, mm. not really. I, I, I've been in a, since this whole thing, my walking is my dancing, my talking is my dancing, mm -hmm. my seeing is my dancing all those different possible parameters of mm. different definitions of dance. It was already a, a, a while, you know, there has been a number of parameters which start to really uh, fascinate me is like 
embodied geometry in the body, gravity, yeah, gravity is defying gravity, desire to fly. But I think in this crisis, you know, uh, what is really coming also very much is that the possible definition of choreography is to write to people, chorus, from the Greek word chorus. Mm -hmm. And the chorus were, were the people in the Greek tragedies. They were commenting mm -hmm. on the main characters. It's also the idea of circular dancing, yeah, or line dancing. And this politics, the definition of politics is how do we organize the city, yeah? There were a lot of people are together and close to each other. How we organize the common space, how we organize. So this is all sort of embedded in the DNA of choreography. I think it's also our most powerful and our most fragile tool. What I do like about this in this process is that actually from the very beginning, I, I, my observation of nature as a possible source of inspiration for choreographing it's, it's coming sort of slowly together and it's, uh, I think in this solo, which is called Goldberg Variation, to the name of the young pianist who was with Kaiserlink, and which Bach wrote at the end of his life. Yeah, Bach wrote the Goldberg Variation at the end of his life when he was sort of retreating from his normal functions because he was suffering quite a lot from the fact that he didn't get the social recognition because his music was not, mere, not more yeah. fashionable anymore. Yeah. But he will write as Holtemperier de Clavier, the Holtemperier de Clavier, the Künstlerfüge, and the Goldberg variation where he brings together all his where his genius brings together his craftsmanship and his knowledge of how to bring the old style of and the new style together, vertical writing and horizontal writing. Because of course, I mean, we, could, we can come back to uh, what you said about this necessity in a way to, to, to come back to the format of the solo. It's like a cycle in a way, like every 20 years or something you, but why, why with Bach? Why, I mean, I guess you, you were asked a lot of time about your relationship with, with Bach, with this composer. In this case, actually, because this choice of, of the, the format of the solo came together with the desire of working on this, on this score, I guess. Yes, I, I must say that, that Bach has been there from the very beginning. Huh? I, I already explained that when I was making violin phase, mm -hmm toward the Brandenburger concerto with, which played with me. And I must say the big discovery during Rosas dan Strosas mm -hmm. in 1983, that was Glenn Gould's Goldberg Variations. That was uh, a discovery, wow, this was a different approach uh, of it. Um, a couple of years later, Steve Paxton made the Goldberg Variations. Mm -hmm. My interest in Bach has been from the very beginning. My really working with Bach waited till I made Toccata. And then gradually afterwards there was Zeitung and Zeitigung, and then there was Mitten. There was Partita with Boris, and then there was Mitten, and then there was Brandenburger. Mm -hmm. and People say, no, you should do something else than Bach, but seriously, it's not an easy one. Once you've been with Bach, how you get, when you're to do Bach, how you go back. I think because for me, Bach is so much, is so much about embodied abstraction. It's mm -hmm. really that. And I can make a list of all those qualities that it is about his rhetorics, about that it's always a life force going forward, upward, that it's always, as a spectator, you recognize yourself in it. 
It's as if it's full of emotions that you can't name, but that you remember of something, something in your body, in your mind. He said, I, I, it's always structured without being systematical. Mm. Uh, it's always about clarity in the big structure and in the detail. And it's always about movement, you know. So coming back to Bach, uh, it, uh, for me, my list is not finished. There is still some, but I will do an effort not to stay only with Bach. I think alternation is the most basic element of structure. So small Mitten, big Brandenburger, small oh. Goldberg. You know, you go like chak, chak, chak. Yeah, how, how do you use the score actually? Do you, do you use it kind of cr chronologically or you do movement back and, back and forth inside of it? A mix. A mix. We, I analyze the score, I improvise to the music, and then you read about it, about yeah, different sources of information. In this case, we, I spoke a lot with Pavel Kolesnikov, but also Alain Franco. And then, generally also, I start to develop vocabulary in silence. Uh, I decide about a basic geometrical pattern that could be, give the, 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 the core of the music. And then here, what was um, mm. very peculiar was that I worked, I, I invited Diane Madden she has been a dancer with the Trisha Brown Company. She has been her associate assistant. And she has been teaching with parts mm. in the last years. So I felt the need to develop, to find my own movement. I've worked, you know, all those early years, Fazeros, Zanstrosos, Elena Zaria, Bartok. I made all this vocabulary myself. I made that for drumming. I made that for rain. But I've made a lot of pieces, especially when the men came in, where the vocabulary comes from dancers. Mm -hmm. And that by sometimes it creates distance. Well, I'm longing for that, for experiencing that in, in my own body. Mm. In my own body. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, uh, I did that with Diane. But what was, what was very good with that was that I had an outside eye who helped me to make choices, because that's finally, it's always about making choices, you know. And that's Diane, the outside eye. Well, mm -hmm. she helps me to articulate, so what is the gap between what I feel and what, what she sees in a very technical way, but also in a poetic te technical way. It's somebody who has the experience of doing that with a choreographer and knowing what is the right distance. So she has a very analytical eye and she has a very insp inspiring voice. So I was not totally alone, you know, but I didn't have to transmit that movement to somebody else. Mm -hmm. I, I could constantly check. And then in relationship to your question, did I go chronologically? I, I both developed the idea of uh, precise articulated writing and improvisation. Improvisation. Improvi? Improvisation. <laughs> and in combining both. Yes. And it also opened the voice of a different relationship with the music. Because since I took the option, listen, I'm not going to be able to work on canon and to work on different voices, the complexity and the, 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 the structural framework, which is so beautiful in the Goldberg variations, how we are gonna uh, um, embody these layered voices? Because canon writing is like the beginning. It's, it's about the basic notion of counterpoint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of simultaneous happening different things. So that's not impossible with a solo line, but it's more complex. It's more complex to do that if you want to create counterpoint in the body. So that was a nice search, but that also, once I decided, well, the second person is not going to be there, second, third, fourth person, 
it opened also a certain freedom in relationship to music, which is in a certain sense maybe inspired by Steve, by Steve Paxton, you know, who explicitly didn't want to have a framework, mm -hmm. no framework. That was really the rule, that was also the sign of the time, so mm -hmm. the Zen-inspired practice that was typical of the late 60s. It was a structural artistic statement, it was nearly also a political statement, uh, but that, that created complete, a totally different relationship with the music, which maybe also definitely was inspired by uh, his experience as a Cunningham dancer and his being mm. part of the Judson. I was just wondering about the musician, because I mean, also you are very also uh, precise, also in, I mean, with the, for the people you are working with, especially with, I mean, with everybody, but the musician, in this case, piano playing, what's there? I am wondering which kind of partner is it for you, uh, the musician, during the process? I mean, it's or? crucial, eh? it's yeah. crucial. I, I mean, it was a long search, you know, as I explained before, for me, the Goldberg variations, I discovered them by Glenn Gould. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was fascinated by them. Thierry de May, my musical dealer, he already way many years ago, he told me, but if you look sound, you like Glenn Gould, you should listen to Rosaline Turek, because that's where, where Gould got, it, got his mustard. I work with a lot of pianists, some very brilliant pianists, like uh, Jos van Immersel, who played Toccata, who, mm. with uh, Alain Franco. I, I really went searching for a, somebody I wanted to work with. I knew some recordings from the latest years, like, for example, Alexandre Tarot has done very beautiful recordings from it. But I, I, I have quite some experience now in working with very good musicians and what that does imply. It is fantastic, but sometimes it's schedule-wise complicated. You're very restricted because those people have very agendas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was one parameter. I wanted to have somebody with a strong vision who has this, who was in first place able to give vision to that music and who was able to play it technically. And there was something in my idea that came, I really would like to have a, a young somebody. Hmm. Not necessarily because there is this story that go that Goldberg was extremely young when he played it. He was 15 or 16. People are saying it's not possible because that music is so complicated. But anyway, yeah. So like I always do for when I look for music, I asked for advice and the director of the Brugge who has a lot of experience working with young pianists. He gave me a list of a whole number of young mm -hmm. pianists and I started to look, to, to look and to listen to all those recordings together with Jean-Luc Plouvier, mm -hmm. who is a pianist from Ictus. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how I came to Pavel, by the recordings he did, but also by interviews I read with him. I found it was somebody who mainly plays the romantic repertoire. He did some very beautiful Coup, uh, Couperin recordings. Mm -hmm. But also in the interviews, the way he spoke about things and how we spoke about sound. I also chose about including my partnership with um, Alain Franco, who has followed a lot of the things so that I, I hope we can play this <laughs> solo for a long time and then we could also do it with different pianists. It's one of those things with Bach is that, no, is I'm, no, well, no, that would be not right, but even when it's played badly, it's always fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, I find this idea of including the different interpretation into the writing but that's for the next step. That's not in Vienna yet now. We can maybe finish about next steps. Um, always, do you know how many pieces you created so far? You, do you follow that? Or you no, I don't know anymore. You don't know. I think 45, 50. 45, 50. <laughs> um, 
you said at the very beginning also I would like now to to make this solo for the re I mean how long how long would you like to do that as as long as as possible Goldberg is now I part think so of as long as possible hmm. I think so I mean I, I it sounds ridiculous but oh no. well it's almost hmm. I really love to dance it's really not a joke or it's not really it's not vanity when I say mm -hmm. it's really my way of relating to the world I really would like to continue to dance or if because of all this crisis it's not possible then I would like to go back to the to the farm then I would like to go into agriculture and that's basically what I did when I was a little girl you know my I come from a farm and I was taking ballet class and I was working on the farm. And that's, I was riding the tractor, mm -hmm. the John Deere's, and I was taking ballet class. That's the two things I really love the most. So that's the only thing you can hope about, is that, that in this closing spiral, there is another spiral that directs us towards something else. And, I see both signs. I, I have the people that count only about going back as quickly as possible, mm -hmm. as quickly as possible as before, and other people that slowly start to realize uh, something fundamentally has to change in the way we live, in the way we consume, in the way we eat, in the way we travel, uh, in the way we build. Um, And in the way we dance. And in the way we dance, well, no, in the way we share dancing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you mean? Well, yeah, I, 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 I think internet and screens and online will never, mm -hmm. will never replace Mm. This, we share the same space and time, mm. you know, because that's, that's the old thing that comes from ancient times, you know. People were sitting around the fire at the end of the day and they look at the sky and they look about nature and people always danced because they were very happy because something happened or because they were very sad or they were afraid from something, you know, and they thought that through dancing, it could have a healing effect. Mm -hmm. It could put the ghosts away or what. And I do think that performing arts and art can have that healing aspect. We do know that animals dance. Do the stars dance? I don't know. Animals have a sort of consciousness, but we can do politics. And we could use dancing to make good gov government, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, not dance really, those bodies have changed and those bodies have the same as since ancient times. But we're a part, we're a part of a bigger whole that is changing continuously. Thank you very much. You're very, very welcome. Mm.